Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of the Las Vegas Advisor Weekly Update with Anthony and Andrew. Today is Thursday, July 7th, and boy, Anthony, there's a lot going on in Vegas. You know, there's always a lot going on, but there was so much going on this week. Yeah. We had a hard time putting this together. Okay. I mean, a lot of things that are kind of interesting we, we pulled out. But, you know, hopefully we've got the cream of the crop here mm -hmm. with a lot of different sort of diverse topics we're going to talk about um, in this video. Well, I like this first one a lot because I'm from L.A. And uh, in Hollywood, they have the Dream Hotel, which is like uh, super fancy, super mm -hmm. cool. And uh, it's coming to Las Vegas. Yeah, well, we've talked about this before, Yeah, you know, that uh, when the announcement was made, but everybody honestly kind of felt that it really was a dream, you mm -hmm. know, that it really wasn't going to happen. And the reason was because of the location. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's down on the, it's they're going to build it down on the way on the south end of the strip. And it's near the Welcome to Las Vegas sign, but that's also near the airport. Right. And that's problematic. And they had to go through all kinds of, you know, red tape and, and jumping through, you know, hoops and everything to get all of their proper permissions and variances. I mean, this is a list that they put out that they had to get their OKs from. They said the, um, the TSA, the FBI, the FAA, Homeland Security, the Secret Service, the Air Force, and the airlines themselves. I mean, I don't know if all that's true, but I mean, they did have to go through a lot of licensing. They made a lot of changes, and now they've gotten to go ahead. That's so, amazing. Yeah, they're breaking yeah. ground tomorrow on Friday. That's a lot. Well, this is Vegas, and uh, you know, near Area 51. I also heard they had to get permission from the Men in Black, the MIB. And, uh, <laughs> that's you know, probably the, the CIA. And, it's probably uh, yeah. so. You know, so <laughs> they're they're talking about 2024 for an opening. So, all right. you know, good news. Another resort right on the Strip. And now, also, Anthony, we have a smaller operation that was announced: the Wildfire Casino, where we hung out a few times. Right. Well, the Wildfire is a sort of a sub-brand of station casinos. Right. And there are, I believe there are seven of them around town. Mm -hmm. uh, we hang a lot by the one near, that's right near the office, you know, right around the corner. It's on uh, Valley View. And this one's going to be downtown, essentially on Boulder Highway, where a, uh, a hotel called the Castaways used to stand. But before that, old timers will remember it as a showboat. Okay. The right. showboat. Yeah, the showboat was a long time place down there on Boulder Highway. But anyway, they're going to put a, a wildfire, part of the wildfire brand up there. You said that with a grin. Now, what, what happened to the showboat? What should we know about the showboat? What was it famous for? Well, the showboat was just something that old timers would know about. Okay. They, they had a buffet that everybody loved. It's where they used to always hold the Las Vegas uh, wrestling uh, shows. Okay. So the big time wrestling shows, all of the wrestlers would go there and they would hang out at the showboat. Uh -huh. It's just, it was a local's place. It was an old timer's place. And when I got here, I wasn't an old timer. I was just a kid. Yeah. And I'd go hang out with the old timers at the showboat and the wrestlers when they would come in. I had a buddy who was a wrestling photographer uh -huh. and we'd go down, he'd come into town every time they came and we'd hang out. And I just have a lot of kind of pleasant memories of the show. Yeah, I could see. Okay, so cool, guys. So that's where it is. Uh, and then the other thing about the Wildfire Casino is that it's a fun place. They have good burgers. They have good food. It's uh, They got good slot games there. It's a cookie cutter. Yeah. I mean, you know, we call these cookie cutters. They're uh -huh. all the same. Essentially, they're all slots. Uh -huh. They are a sports book, mm -hmm. and they are a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. And it's a pretty good restaurant, though. They make a good burger. They only have a few things on the menu. But there's, it's a great th place to pop in, usually 24-hour kitchen. Yeah. And it's a good place to get a late night eats and uh, maybe, you know, play some slots at the bar. Yeah, and you rack up points on your stations card. Correct. Yeah. Now, this one I'm really excited about. Now, downtown is just, like, exploding with all kinds of cool things. And now the downtown grand is doing yet another... Uh, you know, announcement of restaurants. Yeah, well, this is an interesting one because what they've done is they're, they're opening two restaurants that are really known by the locals here in Vegas. Right. One of them is Hot and Juicy Crawfish. Uh huh. There are several of them around town, but it's a Cajun crawfish place, and mm -hmm. they do, you know, the, the, the crawfish boils and all that sort of thing along with, you know, everything else. They do shrimp and lobster and crab and, you know, whatever else, seafood. So I like, you know, I like uh, Hot and Juicy, but the other one is the uh, Yamasushi. Yeah. Now, this one I'm so excited about. Yeah, you know it well. Yeah. I mean, this is a place that you and I go to. There are two Yamas in town, one on the east side, one on the west side, really well known for their all-you-can-eat. Yeah, well, it's premium sushi. It's Yama premium sushi, and uh, the sushi really yeah. is uh, of a great quality. Of all the all-you-can-eat all places, mm -hmm. and I know that uh, sushi snobs don't like that, mm -hmm. but of all of them, this one and a place called Goyaman mm -hmm. are my two favorites. And Yama is... 
Yama is really good, and to have a, a great sushi place downtown is going to be is going to be pretty good. Well, and it's an all you can eat for under thirty dollars a person. You right. know? So, like you know, with me, I try to keep my balance sheet good, and so I go there, I spend my thirty, but I try to eat a hundred. You know yeah. what I mean? No, like like, mo- <laughs> like most people, but uh, they say these places are going to open before the end of the year. So okay. two more good eats downtown. Yeah, I'm excited about that Yama sushi. I literally go there probably once a week, so uh, we're excited about that. And speaking of more. Great food in town. This is one that we've been tracking for a while because it was so exciting for everybody. An all-you-can-eat lobster buffet at the uh, at the Palms. Uh, what's the latest update on this? Well, you know, we're all, we've seen a lot of videos uh, mm-hmm. about the lobster buffet, and everybody concentrates on all-you-can-eat lobster, mm-hmm. which is a pretty good thing. It is. But it's great. Nobody wants to say anything about the lines. Yeah. And we do. That you know, we have. If you go back and look at our. Our Palms uh, Buffet video, we talk about the Lions four-hour wait, four-and-a-half-hour waits. They've done something good there to help alleviate that. Now, the waits are still just as long, but now you don't have to stand in line. When you get there, you can sign up on a sheet, give them your phone number, and they will text you when you're getting close to the top of the list. So you can literally go move around the casino. It's a four-hour wait. You could literally go to a movie at Brendan Theaters. Mm-hmm. And when they text you, you come up because, you know, you could do both, but you don't have to stand in line. I think it's a, it's a great improvement that they made there. Yeah, I think that's a great idea because I really want to do it, but I really don't want to wait in the line. So what I think I will do is I'll do exactly this. I'll go. I'll wait in line probably to sign in early to put my name on the reservation list. And then I'll gamble for a few hours. Yeah, or you can come back to the office and work. <laughs> oh. I mean, we're right around the corner. Yeah. You can yeah, literally that's, do that, that, that because That's true. You're on your phone. They can text you. I'm going to go gamble. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> All right, you guys. But that is cool, and that is at the Palms. Yep. Wednesdays. That's exciting. Okay. Now, here's an interesting one that I don't know too much about, but Anthony's been raving about it. Uh, Frankie Moreno has been announced as the resident headliner at the Palms as well. Yes. You know, back to the Palms again. Um, if you're in, if you're a Vegas person or mm-hmm. you live here, especially, you know who Frankie Moreno is. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is one of the greatest live acts in Vegas. And he started in a lounge. He was, you know, the top lounge act. He went and got a gig, I think, at uh, the Golden. He was at the Golden Nugget. He got a gig at the main room at the Stratosphere mm-hmm. when it was still Stratosphere. Then he moved back to the Golden Nugget and then Planet Hollywood. And he's frequently a, a performer at the Smith Center. Mm-hmm. This guy is such a terrific live performer. He's a piano guy. I mean, he goes back to the, like what I call the croon and banter style. Okay. Meaning he sings and talks. He oh. sings and talks and makes jokes, walks out into the audience, um, begs for shots. I mean, people buy him shots right and left. He takes shots with the audience, yeah. tells jokes, sings. He does a lot of his own stuff, but he does lots of covers. He's very Billy Joel-like or Elton John, you know, playing the piano, playing it backwards, the whole thing. And the best thing is he's going to be the resident headliner there. So he's going to have a lot of dates, and he's going to be playing in the Chaos uh, venue, which was like a day club at the former Palms. Okay, and exciting. They're going to change it into, he's not going to play at the Pearl, he's going to play at Chaos. And um, tickets start at $31 base price. So that's one of the best deals in town for as far as ticket pricing for goes. For entertainment, yes. Yeah. It's gonna, I think this is going to be one of the great entertainment deals. And he's got a full live band. So it's, the first show is July 29th. We'll keep you up to date on that. Maybe we'll go see. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll film a little bit of it. But uh, Frankie Marino, that's a great call at the Palms. So a lot of people have written in the comments over the last uh, two years, how do Anthony and Andrew know each other? How do we even know each other, Anthony? And how did we get to partner up on what we're doing right here? Yeah, how did this all happen? A lot of people have sort of commented that it's a strange combination. Mm -hmm. You know, Andrew is very show savvy. I'm just kind of not. I I wouldn't say that. (laughs) We'll just leave that that part. Yeah. So anyway, a lot of people think it's an interesting but maybe strange combination. Yes. Well, we met because of something called Question of the Day, something we do at LasVegasAdvisor.com, meaning we answer a question every single day of the year. Now, sometimes, like on July 4th, all we said was Happy 4th of July, but that's very rare. Mm -hmm. Normally, we go into a very long, you know, uh, discussion of you know answering the question with a deep dive. We spent a lot of time and assets on it. Yeah, it's a detailed explanation of a lot of different questions. I think you've answered over five thousand questions. Yeah, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, this one today on Thursday, July seventh. Right, yeah. this is July seventh. The question of the day is, who is Andrew Hunt? Yeah, how did we meet? Right, and so you can go look at it right now. Now let's let's say you watch this video in a couple of days, and so it's a new question of the day. 
anybody, you don't have to be a member of LVA or anything, you can go into the Question of the Day archives. So getting back to those 5,800, we've been doing this since 2006. Mm -hmm. 365, that's over 5,800 questions that we've answered that you can go into those archives and you can ask just about anything. You can search just about anything in those archives and we're gonna have an answer to it. You really should check out our question of the day and you can, answer, you can ask your own questions. I mean, you know, we, that's where we get the questions is people send them in and we answer them. And moving on from question of the day to jackpot of the week. Now, guys, this is a really fun one for a few different reasons. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start reading it, and then, uh, and then we'll comment. Uh, from Mike S. Yes, this is from Mike S., and he says, On my last trip, my wife and I decided that each day we'd visit a group of casinos and play $40 in video poker at each. We created a set of rules to keep us moving. $40 in the machine. $1 denomination at max bet. At $0, it's on to the next casino, no more play. Upon reaching $65, we leave if we drop to 40. At $100, we cash out at any point, but not less than 80. After two days, we were about even, and on the third day, it got interesting. We were down to $80, and we were at the win. At the win on the third hand of Joker Poker, we held just a Joker, and this happened. After inspecting Resorts World, we were working our way back to mid-strip. At Treasure Island, about two and a half hours after we hit the, at the win, this happened. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. Well, there's kind of like, you know, look, I've been watching the news lately, and all the, uh, the pundits come on, they go, there's a lot to unpack here. Mm. So there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, it really is. First of all, is like, all right, look what he made. You know, he made, uh, he made five of a kind on Joker Wild, Joker Poker. Uh, meaning you get a four of a, a regular natural four of a kind plus a joker. Mm -hmm. It pays a thousand coins. So they made their planned dollars. They made a thousand at the first, a thousand at the second, two thousand dollars worth there. Um, How many jokers are in the deck? Only one joker. There's only one joker. Only one joker. Okay. And uh, they were playing. They played two different games. The first one at the win paid seventeen for the four, for four of a kind. The second game at TI paid fifteen. Okay. So the difference of two pips there. That was the only difference in the two games, but that small difference, it would seem, changed the first game, which was 98.4%, to a 96.7% game. Okay. So they played a lesser game on the second, same result. Um, they held the joker alone the first time. They held the two sevens the next. But there's a couple of things to talk about here. You might look at that and go, okay, joker wild. You know, Maybe I should be playing that game. I mean, this is cool. You make $1,000 just for hitting five of a kind. Joker poker is a very difficult game to play. Right. The rules are completely different. I mean, rules in terms of what you hold. Right. And uh, you've got to study that game before you do it. I kind of like it because a lot of crazy things can happen. I like the variance in that game. But, you know, for example, it pays. It's called kings are better. So you don't hold jacks. You don't hold queens. Right, you don't. You hold kings. Now, you'll, mm -hmm. hold, you'll hold suited jacks and queens and things like that. But you only hold kings and aces if you're holding, you know, s s uh, singles. Right, because you're really going for a five of a kind. Well, you're going for a pair. You're going for a pair of kings or better yeah. and above. And above. Okay, All right, so that's it. one. Joker poker is a tough game, so you've got to be careful with that. All right, two is I want to address his rules. Because a lot of people would be, okay, that's like a money management system. Mm -hmm. And you can beat gambling through money management. You really can't. If you're playing a negative expectation game, there is no form of money management that will give you the advantage. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that. But what money management can do or what rules like this can do is it keeps a lid on the risk. Yes, definitely. All right. So there you notice they're saying we stop if we lose. We don't put in more money. And what do they do? They walk to the next casino. And what are they doing? They're lowering their exposure yeah. to the casino edge. So they're walking around, they're having fun, they're doing more walking than playing, but they still feel like they're playing and having a great time and good things can still happen. And they're probably getting drinks at each casino stop. And the, the other thing there is they're preventing themselves from getting stuck in that hypnotic rhythm where you just keep pushing the button. Yeah, and that's how people get in trouble. That's how yeah. they, they, they shoot their bankroll in the first day. That's right. And people always ask me, they go, if I'm losing at this game, should I leave this machine? And I always go, absolutely. And they think that's because I'm saying the machine is cold or something. I'm going, no, because you'll stop playing. You'll find another game. You'll be walking around instead of playing. And those two games, assuming they're the same pay schedule, are absolutely the same, whether you believe it or not. Right, so but I it's say, also the in-between time. Yeah, and that's why I say, yes, move, because now you're not sitting in there playing and still losing money to the negative expectation game. Right. You're walking around, not playing, and then you play later. So yeah. you, you get less, you know, you play less. Right, and that's a great time to also text your mother 
and uh, tell her that you love her. Yeah, you know, and that uh, you're in Vegas, blowing, yeah. blowing your money. Yeah, check your work email. You know, if you're, right. <laughs> that's a good time to do that. So one more so, thing, Andrew, before yeah. we end this segment, I want to go back to the uh, to last week's or two weeks ago, the dancing drums. Oh, okay. We um, we did address this last week that I sort of misspoke, saying that I thought that it might be advantage play game. It is not. When the when the when the pots are full, it does. It's not indicative of anything. It no difference. Right. It doesn't mean that it's about to hit or anything else. I just want to make sure that you know the the viewers know that. Okay, so uh, you've heard it here, uh, but go out and play those slot machines if you're feeling slotty. <laughs> and that's it for today, and we'll see you next week.